everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. I, um, I'm just coming by today to share a bit of a show and tell, kind of, on how I go about mixing colors. And normally, I don't mix colors per se, like, um, just a direct color mix. I do, um, blends of colors and blends like this to make faux stones, but sometimes when I make bezels, I do, um, I do mix colors. So this was basically a one-to-one -one mix of the silver and gold. Alright, came out with a really pretty, um, more true gold to me. But what I really was going for was more like a kind of a platinum color. So I'm going to mix what I've got left of this, let's call it a kind of white gold, with some more of this silver. Decisions, decisions about how much to mix. So this is uh, possibly like a quarter block of the two ounce. I'm going to mix it with this um, basically half and half blend of gold and silver. And it, I'll go on to show you how I would go about mixing colors in a minute. Okay. I think you can see how much of a lighter um, gold this is than, than it was before. But you can also see how much more powerful the gold is than the silver. I would probably need to add the rest of this um, whole slice to get the color that I'm really looking for. So. I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to roll this in my pasta machine for uh, six or seven times and see what we can get. Okay, the traditional way to not only mix colors, but to make them uniform where you can repeat them over and over again, is to use a particular setting on your pasta machine, whatever setting you choose, and then a cutter so that when you cut the discs you can remember how many parts you put together. For example, I could cut two parts of this silver gold and mix it with, let's say, a bit of this blue, which I don't even know what the color is anymore. Let me see. No. The, the problem with these, it looks like it's a pearl. Which I believe it is. A pearl blue. But I'm not sure what the color is. Or if they even still make it. I would need to check. Alright. So I could roll this out and cut a disc of the blue and let's say a disc of the silver mix them together all right there are also sculpy colors sculpy three colors of gold this one happens to be the jewelry gold this one is the treasure gold 
All right, and you can see the treasure treasure gold is actually much closer to my silver gold that I just created than it is to the primo gold, which is completely different. All right, this jewelry gold is actually closer to the primo gold than it is to the silver gold. All right. So that's just a little bit of how I would go about mixing colors. Okay, now you can see this is really just the tiniest bit of this pearl, whatever it is. But I really like the color. But it is Sculpey 3, so I would want to mix it rather than just use it straight. Alright, so I've got one disc of this pearl. It's probably like an ultramarine pearl or something like that. Alright, and I'm going to mix it with, let's say, two discs of the silver. Alright. So I'm just going to create a little sandwich, something like that, and then roll it through my pasta machine. Okay, now here it is. As you can see, right between the silver and this, whatever this color blue is. I really, really like the color it's turned out. I might would add another disc of silver just to bring it up just a bit more towards the silver. If I were going to use it for a bezel, let's say. But as you can see, that's a real easy way to mix colors, especially into your um, metallics. Alright, now to mix translucence in with it would really just be the same technique but with the translucent you would need let's say for a sheet this size you would literally need half that in the color because the color is really really pigmented and the translucent has no pigment in it so the translucent will um, really take on the colors that you add to it all right so i'll show you a demonstration all right here is just a bit of it's actually the white translucent primo effects and i've got just a small bit I'm actually going to even make a smaller bit. All right, literally that small. For two discs of the Primo translucent. All right. All right, I'm going to run this through my pasta machine, and you'll see how pigmented this blue really is compared to the no, tran no pigments in the translucent. Okay, here is that pearl blue color, just the way it comes out of the package. Here it is mixed with the, with the translucent. Now, as you can see, it still has... The pearl shimmer but it's mixed just a tiny piece with the two discs of translucent so actually when it bakes up though this will be far more translucent than it would be without the translucent added all right you can see that the translucent 
really doesn't add any color, but it does add translucence. Translucency. <laughs> Not sure which is correct there. All right, so that just gives you an idea of what you can do with color mixing. This is Sculpey 3. Like I say quite often, I would never use Sculpey 3 just by itself when I'm creating jewelry because it's far too brittle. It will snap on you in a heartbeat. But just by mixing it with the translucent Primo, now you've got something totally different. This will bake up strong, flexible, and really good quality. So it's worth not throwing out the Sculpey 3. Um, there are so many things you can do with it. Like I did in the, uh, the glitter stone tutorial. You can use Sculpey 3 in that and just mix it with the glitter. Anytime I'm making cabochons, more than likely, I've thrown in a little Sculpey 3. Um, it's an easy way to use up the Sculpey 3. Um, the cabochon itself won't be, um, it won't be in, a, in an instance where it's going to break. Because more than likely, it's going to be backed with some Primo. And probably surrounded by Primo. Alright, so... There's just a few quick hints and tips on color mixing. Um, if you've got any more questions, feel free to ask me. Um, put them down below. I always answer my comments, so... Um, I don't know what else I can say about it. There are so many colors to choose from between the three lines of um, Polyform products. The Sculpey 3, the Souffle, the Primo, the Primo Accents. You've got a really, really wide range. I don't really use a lot of Fimo, but just because it's difficult for me to get a hold of. Alright, I would love to try CERN it, um, but again, it's difficult to get a hold of. Um, Kato 3, I'm not a fan of the smell. It really does, um, really does something to me. I don't like it. But I've heard it's great for caning. So if you're into caning, you might try some Kato. Alright, so mix translucent with your Sculpey 3 colors. If you want them stronger and more flexible, um, Use them in faux stones if you still want to be able to use it in jewelry making. Um, you can mix, mix away the colors. Really and truly, I rarely use um, a color straight out of the package. I almost always either mix colors or paint them when I'm done. For faux stones, of course, I'm, I'm always mixing. I'm always experimenting. Um, I normally do one of a kind pieces, so I never write stuff down. I'm not. I'm not very good at writing stuff down. All right. So that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Bye for now.